Hi, we're out on the range today, so bear with me if you hear gunfire in the background. Today we're talking about the Taurus Judge Revolver. Now this is a five shot double action revolver that will shoot 45 Colt or 410 shot shells. This came out a couple of years ago. They've sold a lot of them. There's a lot of people think this is the end all be all of handguns. Well, I'm not so sure about that. And before you can say, does it do what it's supposed to do? First you have to ask the question, what is this thing supposed to do? Well, nearest I can tell from the ads I see from Taurus, they tout this for several things. One is for concealed carry. Okay. Well, I doubt that it is as concealable as this Ruger SP-101 357 Magnum, which is also a five-shot double-action revolver, but it's a 357 Magnum. It's more powerful than that 45 Colt, and it's a lot smaller. Well, we're talking about concealed carry, this is a Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum with a 4-inch barrel. 357 Magnum out of a 4-inch barrel is a lot more powerful than 45 Colt out of this 3-inch barrel. This is also a 6-shot revolver. And one of the biggest criticisms back in the days when these were popular is that it's too big and too heavy for concealed carry. It's smaller than the Taurus Judge. So as concealed carry goes, I don't think this is making the grade, and that's just talking about revolvers, let alone all the concealable auto loaders that are out there. When I bought this at a gun store, the gun store employee that sold it to me was a retired police officer, and he said that one of his crew had bought one of these as a backup gun. Backup to what? What was his primary? A law rocket? Where are you going to carry this thing? And he found out pretty quickly that it was no fun to carry as a backup or for concealment in any purpose. So what else would you do with it? Well, let's shoot some targets and see what we can find out. So for concealed carry, this might not be the most practical gun. So what can it do for you? One thing it does is you can load it with 410 shot shells. What I've got in it right now is 410 three inch magnum, five pellets of triple lot buck. So each pellet is 36 caliber. The idea is that at a distance that's going to spread out and create a pattern and give you better hit probability. Okay, well these targets right here are seven yards away. And we know that seven yards, is, the FBI has been telling us for decades, that's the mean average distance for a lethal confrontation. So I'm going to shoot the target on the left with this 357 Magnum revolver and see what kind of group I can get and then see if I have less misses by shooting the one on the right with the buckshot pattern. Okay, now let's see if I can get better hits with the buckshot. Let's take a closer look. Well, how'd we do? Well, as you can see with a conventional revolver, you can just hit the target. With this, there are more hits, but the group certainly isn't any better. You haven't increased your chances of hitting whoever it is you were shooting at. This might look devastating because there's more pellets in there. That's just because in three shots, 15 balls actually went down range. But believe me, as someone who's shot quite a few deer with buckshot, buckshot is not more powerful than fairly powerful conventional centerfire ammunition like 357 Magnum. Now let's see if we can illustrate that. So we see that at seven yards it's got a lot more bullet holes and that looks impressive, but it didn't really increase your hit probability. But is it really any more effective? Well at seven yards now I've got our favorite target, soda jugs, and let's shoot the one on the left with the 357 and the one on the right with the buckshot and see how we do. And there you have it, just one bullet out of this was significantly more effective than the five buckshot pellets out of this. But let's try another target and see how we do. I've got two cinder blocks down there at seven yards, so I'll shoot the one on the left with five rounds out of the 357, and one on the right with five buckshot rounds out of the Taurus Judge, and let's see if there's any difference in effect. We'll shoot the block on the left with the 357.
And now the block on the right with the Taurus Judge buckshot. So how'd we do? Well, first of all, you might ask, why am I comparing these two guns? Basically, it's because they're both revolvers of similar size and weight. And you can see the net result. Remember, in shooting the 357, only five rounds went down range. Out of this Taurus, each shell has five projectiles in it. Five shots, that's 25 projectiles, went down range at this cinder block. And you can see the result. So we've seen at seven yards that the buckshot doesn't really give you a whole lot more hit probability. And we've seen that it really isn't any more effective. Now let's shoot 25 yards and see if that pattern will spread out and give you any better hit probability. Just for fun, I'm going to switch revolvers. This is a Model 15 38 Special. And I'm going to shoot this target at 25 yards. And then we'll repeat that with the Taurus and see if we can do any better. Okay, there's our five impacts. Yeah, I had one out. Now let's put up a new repair center and we'll go back to 25 yards and repeat this using the Taurus Judge and the buckshot rounds and see if that really increases our hit probability. Well, how'd we do? Well, for one thing, 25 pellets went down range, and I only count nine of them on this target. Also, did you notice that buckshot can be kind of unpredictable? I think there was one of those shots that not a single pellet hit the target. So although at seven yards they hadn't spread out enough yet to increase your hit probability, by the time they've gone 25, they spread out so much that they significantly decrease your hit probability. So it looks like, in terms of buckshot, giving you a pattern that's going to increase your chances of hitting an adversary, that's going to work for you if you find yourself in the very unique position of shooting at someone who's exactly 10 to 12 yards away. At this distance, this isn't doing much for you at all, compared to the 38 Special, which had four of the five rounds in the 10 ring. And yes, I'm very well aware of that smug advice coming from somebody who holds six state championships for shooting. But believe me, getting a gun with real bullets and going out and training with it a little bit and learning how to shoot it, you're going to be better off than buying a gun that you think is going to do that for you. One of the things the Taurus Judge Revolver is touted as being good at is an anti-snake gun. Now, when you're shooting snakes, you want to shoot birdshot. You've got to hit them in the head, and that cloud of birdshot should give you good hit probability. I mean, a snake's head is fairly small. So, the pattern density is very important, and pattern density is not something you're going to get a lot of out of a three-inch barrel. But at the distances at which you shoot snakes, it should work okay. Pattern density, there is some trickiness to it. Let me see if I can illustrate what I'm talking about. Right now, I've got two shells in here. One is 410, two and a half inch, half ounce, number seven and a half shot. The other is 410, three inch, 11 sixteenths ounce of number seven and a half shot. So it's 3 sixteenths of an ounce more, which doesn't sound like much, but it actually is, especially when you're talking about these low numbers. Now I'm at five yards, which is farther than you'd shoot a snake, but I want to see if I can illustrate the point I'm making. So let's shoot the two and a half inch shell. Now let's go examine our pattern. Well, how'd we do? Well, first of all, I only hit the snake in the head with one pellet. And this black circle I've drawn around here shows the size of the pattern. Now I'm going to repeat this with a three inch shell which has more shot and therefore the pattern should be denser. So let's see how we do with the three inch shell. So how'd we do? Well, for one, there's now three pellets in the snake's head, one of which was already there, so that's two instead of one, so that's twice as good. 
Also, a really big thing is there's only one or two pellets outside this circle, which means your pattern remained the same size with the more powerful shell, just denser. And that's very important because sometimes shot shells, when you go to the magnum rounds, will what we call shock the pattern, and it's not any denser, it's just a bigger pattern. I don't see that in this case. Now, I've only fired one round of each, but still, it looks like we'll be okay. Okay. When we were testing our pattern size, we only shot one round of each type. And you don't really want to hang your hat on the results of just one shot. So let's shoot three shots and then mean average the number of pellets we get in the head of each snake. Also, we're going to shoot at a more realistic snake distance of seven feet. And I put these down pretty close to the ground. Yes, snakes sometimes can be in trees, but more often they're going to be on the ground. So let's see how we do. So how'd we do? Well, I counted up how many impacts we had, and you can see the numbers written on here. And like I said, shot shells can be a little unpredictable. We got one, four, and seven, which comes out to a mean of four, but that doesn't necessarily mean they were all hit with four. You'll also see that the pattern is fairly big, so your hit probability in this case is pretty good. Even if you're a little bit off, he's still gonna be within the pattern. And four pellets in a snake's head, probably going to be effective. So it seems like for this, the Taurus judge is pretty good. However, let me show you something else. So we saw that the 410 revolver can be pretty effective against snakes. But what about shot shells in your conventional handgun? Let me show you a close up of what they look like. This is a 45 ACP shot shell. Some people say shot shells will not function very well out of auto loaders. They've worked fine out of every auto loader I've ever shot them out of. But let's see how well they do shooting at the snakes at seven feet. So how'd we do? Well, the numbers are pretty well comparable to the 410 shells. And this is seven feet. If you were really shooting a snake, you might even be closer than that. And one thing's for sure, a box of shot shells for the pistol you already have is a whole lot less expensive than going out and buying a $500 plus new gun. I also have to point out that I tried this with the 38 special shot shells, and the results were disastrous. The 410 rounds were a lot more effective than those. So it depends a lot on which caliber you're using and which gun you're using. Either way, for whatever gun you have, buy some shot shells, test them out. And if you don't like them, don't use them. Also, again, shot the shot shells out of the solder loader and they work just fine. So how'd we do? Well, you can conceal just about any gun. Clint Eastwood managed to conceal a Model 29 with an eight and three eighths inch barrel. But for most of us, this for concealed carry, not really practical. As far as loading it with buckshot and it's going to be devastatingly effective, not by anything we saw here today. As far as that buckshot giving you a lot more hit probability, again, not really. However, shooting at snakes with it, I gotta say, not too bad. And depending on what gun you have, you might just buy conventional handgun shot shells and be better off. But still, not too bad. But all told, really, to me, this gun does not live up to the hype. And I've shot it a lot more than just what I demonstrated here today. And after all the things I did here today and all the stuff I've done with it, it doesn't live up to the hype. However, that having been said, a very important part of any gun that you carry or any gun that you use, especially when you're talking about personal protection type of guns, a really important thing is what I call gun psyche. You have to feel good about your gun. You have to feel confident with it. Now, the gun I carry most of the time is this one right here. It's a 25, and I feel really good about it. I can hold all the rounds on target at 25 yards. I've killed a deer with this gun. My gun psyche with that is just fine. But you'd be amazed how many people have told me, oh, Paul, that'd just piss them off. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me that, I could buy another one of these. So you have to feel good about your gun. I don't feel good about this, but if you've got one and it makes you feel confident and it makes you feel safe and you feel like you can get the job done with it, then that's way more important than anything I showed you here today. So, as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Taurus Judge Review.